All right, welcome to the Codex Cantina. This is going to be a very quick announcement video, as well as maybe kind of quickly talking about a book here that probably isn't appropriate for a deep discussion on this channel at least. But we are going to be doing a year of the NYRB Book Club. If you are not familiar with the NYRB, the New York Review Books, it is a publishing company that kind of rescues, saves, translates older text, foreign text, brings them back into the public purview to allow us to kind of enjoy perhaps some hidden gems. And it tends to be a lot of literary fiction, but it's got a lot of classics as well as maybe some lectures or other things. And what you can do is you can sign up for a year of their books. And I said, hey, we typically do so many free books, books that are in the public domain, books that are readily available for free at the library. What would happen if we tried some newer stuff? So before people could get their hands on it to really guarantee kind of like a fresh view. So I thought we'd check out a year of that. And our first book is actually a group of two lectures. It's called Charisma and Disenchantment by Max Weber who is a very famous German sociologist. I think a lot of people are very familiar with him and I'm familiar with him from a disenchantment and the Protestant work ethic that he kind of pushed forward. And I think that may be what he's most known for. But in 1917 and in 1919, he gave two speeches. And you gotta remember 17, 1917 is kind of when there was like a lot of food shortage. It is before the end of World War I where he talked about the idea of teaching as a vocation and is that a legitimate pursuit that one can pursue? And then two years later in 1919, he had a speech about politics as a vocation, which I think is very interesting because he did influence, I believe, from my understanding, a lot of the World War, post-World War I German political system and how that moved forward. In terms of uh, my review of this book, there's a lot of different ways you can approach this. Obviously, I think I'm most interested from a teacher perspective. Shocking, right? Teaching as a vocation, but this was also told in a time that is much different and in a land that's different, but much different from mine. But with that said, he specifically compares the American teaching system from a university level Level, I want to add, and it's talking about research as opposed to teaching. And I think you can draw a lot of parallels with this even you don't even have to keep it within teaching, right? So let's talk about it from a YouTube perspective. One of the things he talks about is presentation skills. I don't think I have the best presentation skills. This is not me fishing for compliments. I am very realistic and know how much editing goes in to make one of these videos watchable. And I think it's interesting to talk about how he, a lot of people will select teachers based on popularity rather than their academic or, or philosophical skills. And also there's the scholarly side of things, of their research and their ability to push logic forward. Because one of the things that teachers like to do do is not only do they train the future of the world, but they like to push logic. And he had a very interesting point where why do we do this? Is this so that we can get perfect knowledge and potentially become like God ourselves? Can we be perfect and have the knowledge and finally be done and have the knowledge of the world and have completed things? I think he raises some interesting questions there and I very much enjoyed the teaching section. Now, when it comes to the politics side, obviously that's not for me. You can be looking at this from the political angle. You could be looking at this from a sociology angle. I'll leave that to you. But this section is probably not for me though I was interested but the problem is is I want to say the first 50% of the politics side was just a lot of historical information and stuff that most people already know or if you're interested in this you would definitely kind of know how this works of course one of his big, ang big angles is that politics is a monopoly on violence which I think uh, I just recently read the Steven Pinker book on the the history of violence and that was a big angle that he pushed as well so I don't know if that's a common thing or not but it just felt like a lot of rehashing of information I think most people interested would kind of know about, if not a great simplification of it, right? I'm not saying that's 100% of it, but it is an interesting angle. And that's what he spends probably the first half of that lecture covering. And then he goes into a lot more of it about kind of the current status of things. We do have some wonderful gems. I have this quote, if anything binds humans across space and time, it is, according to Weber, their capacity to create meaning. And that comes from kind of like the introduction section. If you are new here, we have been doing a year of Tolstoy. So I thought that was actually quite interesting how often he compared Tolstoy, of course, who wrote in the late 1890s, early 1900s that this actually was a very appropriate time to be quoting Tolstoy, which I thought was interesting. And of course, if you're familiar with his Protestant and Calvinism work angle, he will bring religion into both of these angles, and I think they're very interesting. So with that said, I think this is an interesting book. I was obviously much more attracted to the teaching side than the politics side, but I was interested in politics. With that said, the politics section did feel like a chore for me coming at it with that angle. I would rate this book a, probably a four out of 10, and I actually don't think I have an interest in keeping this book. So as a weird kind of of giveaway. Uh, I'm not really looking to spend money to, to, to send it out, but if you are, I live in Indianapolis, travel to Chicago, Milwaukee. If you are in those regions and are interested, I will just give this book to you if you would like to, to meet somewhere or, or 
I can hand it off at a location and you pick it up. Uh, I'd be more than happy to share this book if this is something that you would be interested in. I will give it to you for free. Nothing needed. Just, just reach out to me on Twitter. You're welcome to DM me if you want to coordinate. Uh, I'd be more than happy to kind of pass this book on to have someone else that maybe could treasure or enjoy it. Or if you wanted to pass it on, that's up to you too. But just spreading the love since this is not something that I think I would dive into again, though I do appreciate what it did. There's just a lot of different angles that you could approach this. And I don't think they're ones that I would want to rehash over and over again. So with that said, if you're interested in checking out NYRB Book Club, uh, you're welcome to check out this channel. I will be trying to push out within a week or two when they're released, uh, basically as it happens. Now with that said, the March one, the Marrow and Bone comes out March 24th. And then I think two weeks later, early April, the April one comes out. So those will be struggles to kind of push out as quick as possible, particularly the March one. I'm not sure I can get that in March, but feel free to subscribe and I will try to get those reviewed to use as soon as possible as we go down a year of the NYRB book club and check out what is being pushed out and we can kind of talk about whether we think that the money's worth it for you guys or not. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to spend with me today to hear about this project, hear about why we're doing this project. If that's something that you're interested in, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. What angle did you come at this book with? Like, was this book 100% up your alley or are you looking at a specific angle and what you took away from it? Please consider subscribing. We push videos every Monday and Thursday. Una out.